Okay, so I'm going to do um, a couple of exam questions and I'm going to do one specifically where they use this phrase always true, sometimes true or never true. Now we could actually do part one of this question, it's just going to be a completing the square bit, but all I want to have a look at is this part two here. It says if I add a number, sorry, if I add three to a number and square the sum, the result is greater than the square of the original number. State, which means you can just say the answer, giving a reason if the above statement is always true, sometimes true or never true. Now, it's two marks here, so I think it's probably just going to be sometimes true, because if it was always true or never true, you would need to um, prove that as well. So usually it's going to be sometimes true if it's a couple of marks, but don't quote me on that because it might not always be like this. So I'm going to translate this sentence. It says, if I add three to a number and then square the sum. So I have a number. I'm going to add three to it and I'm going to square the sum. They think that the result is greater than the square of the original number. So I'm going to try and find out if this is sometimes true. If it's sometimes true, I need to find an example where it is true and an example where it is false. So I could expand the brackets. Um, so I'm going to do x squared plus 6x plus 9 must be greater than x squared. I can subtract x squared from both sides. And so I get that x is greater than minus 9 over 6, or x is greater than minus 3 over 2. So it will be true if x is greater than minus 3 over 2, and false if x is less than minus 3 over 2. Hence, it is sometimes true. You could say, if x was equal to, I don't know, minus 3, then it is false, because 0 is less than 9 by substituting it in. And then you could say, if x was equal to 3, then it is true. You could give examples instead. So this is me doing it in like an algebraic way, and this is just using examples then it is true because 36 is greater than 9. So for these always true, sometimes true or never true, just find a couple of examples where it will work um, or you can try and use some kind of algebraic um, explanations like I did in the first half. So I have two exam questions that I want to have a look at. This one is not super fun, but I'm going to try this one. It says prove that for all positive values of x and y, root xy is greater than or equal to x plus y over 2. So first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2 so that I end up with this expression here. Then I'm going to try and make it look like some kind of quadratic. So I'm going to subtract 2 root xy plus y. And then I'm going to spot that this can be factorized into root x minus root y all squared because this thing here it's a bit difficult to spot but it's only two marks can actually be factorized into that expression and you can expand that to check it if you're not sure then we can say because root x minus root y squared uh, we can say sorry this is true this is always true because anything squared is greater than or equal to zero. Anything squared is greater than or equal to zero. So this statement that I've got written at the bottom here is equivalent to this statement. So if this is true, then this is true. So we manipulated the green statement to become the bottom green statement. And we can say that if the bottom one is true, then the top one must be true. And the bottom one is true because when you square something, it is always greater than zero. So for part B of the question, it's nice and easy. It just says prove by counterexample that this is not true when X and Y are both negative. So I'm just going to pick some values. I'm just going to say let X equal minus two and Y equal minus two. Then, whoops. The square root of xy is going to be the square root of negative 2 times negative 2, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. 
and x plus y over 2 would be minus 2 minus 2 over 2, which is minus 2. Here we have that root xy is greater than x plus y over 2. So this is our counterexample. So just substitute in some values and show that it's the other way around to what they wanted. Okay, last one that we've got here, it's a bit of a mixture. It says, use a counterexample to show that the following statement is false. So it says that n squared minus n minus 1 is a prime number for, three, for n between 3 and 10. So I'm going to show you a shortcut that you might find helpful to do on your calculators. Um, so I could actually just test out 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, but instead I'm actually going to get my calculator to do all of that for me. So it's for n squared minus n minus 1. Okay, so on my calculator here, and it works the same if you do this on your class with calculator, you're going to go to the table feature. Now the table feature is number 7 on the graphics, and it's number 9 on the normal calculator, the class with. I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to type in, it was n squared, but I'll have to do x squared, minus n, and I think it was plus 1, I'm just going to double check, no, minus 1. So it's n squared minus n minus 1. You then press equals, and it will be the same on the class with. I'm going to then go to set the values. I want it to start at 3. I want it to finish at 10. And I want the step for it to go up in to be 1s. You can then just look through the list when you get the table. And you can see that the outputs are 5, which is prime. 11 is prime. 19 is prime. 29 is prime. 41 is prime. Aha. Uh -huh. 55 is not prime, and the rest all are. So when x or n is equal to 8, we have the answer 55, which is not prime, and so it is therefore a counter example. So for that part one of the question, we can say when n equals uh, 8, n squared minus n minus 1 equals 55, which is not prime. And that's it. We've used a counterexample. So the statement is false. The last part says, prove that the following statement is always true. So it says the difference between the cube and the square of an odd number is even. So let our odd number be 2n plus 1 where n is an integer. Then the difference between the cube and the square we will work out. So using our binomial we would have 2n cubed which is going to be 8n cubed plus 3 times 2n all squared which is going to be 12n squared plus 3 times 2n which is 6n plus 1 and then we're going to be subtracting 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. So we have here 8n cubed plus 8n squared from the 12n squared minus the 4n squared plus 2n. And then the 1s are going to cancel, which we can then take a factor of 2 out. So you have 4n cubed plus 4n squared plus uh, n. And so we can say here... This is even, hence the statement is always true. Okay, so there's a couple more questions from the mixed exercise of chapter 7, question 19 and question 24, which I think are good. But what I think might be useful for you to do is to try these questions that I have done again here and to see if you can remember how to do them without looking at your notes that you've taken. Okay, I hope that was useful.